Hi guys, welcome back to more episodes of The Wire, and we are on the season finale of season one. So as usual, we're not going to do a recap, we're going to see how this plays out, talk about it at the end. Um, if you're enjoying this show as much as I am, it is very, it's very different, it's very complicated. There is a lot of lines of dialogue that appear to be thrown away, which a lot of it is turning out not to be. Why not subscribe to the channel, and we'll be back for season two after this episode. But to begin with... Let's see it out. This is episode 13. Been there long. She's lucky. Very lucky to have woke up. 20 minutes. You know, we didn't want to uh, exactly disturb you. But what is all? Could you with answering a couple of questions if she's up to it? Little man. For sure. It's good. Yeah, you're going right? You don't have to point to it. The other one. You know, she's outside sure. in the dark. So. Uh, you know, it's okay. It's okay. Freeman, he tracked a call from the payphone near the scene. Just string a bell. Page it. We don't have the guns. No prints from the scene. No witnesses. Anything worthwhile? Some phone numbers that match. Scraps of nicknames, not much else. The wires are dead. The bug in the club is useless. They're yep. moving out of there even as we got up on them. To Clean where? Shop. No clue. Shit, what well, we put on? Boxdale barely makes some break stride. Okay, so we get a hint of where they're setting back up. We asked the state's attorney for a new bug. It's Rhonda Perlman. She just got a call from an assistant public defender in North Jersey who claims to represent a man by the name of D'Angelo Barksdale. They're meeting <laughs> in homicide. You bring a tape record. It's good you moved out of there. I don't uh, know, man. I mean, if they got a mic up in there, they got you and me saying all kind of shit. Man. Yeah, they don't oh, know, though, do they? Me. They don't know what they do and don't have. They said he'd be in tonight. The thing is, they take you and leave me? Yeah, that's what's fucking me up, too, man. Look, yeah. well, soon enough, as soon as I start pressing for discovery. He not gonna buck. A day or two in the New Jersey bullpen, he gonna be crying, waiting for bail money like the rest of them. One of the ways to limit your exposure is what's called a structured plea. That means that you're going to have to deliver your people, all of them, down to a man. So basically, he's going to let all of them that have been pulled in sacrifice for him. This is the thing, though. I mean, they never managed to get a wire properly in his office. But they've already pieced that together. He has no idea what they've heard, what they haven't heard. Thing is, man, we got to get back on our feet. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, the longer we hold off, the harder it's gonna be for us to maintain them towers. You wanna get it back up? You lean to me and string here. But you tell Roberto, he gotta make it a serious smoker. I mean, I want them motherfucking fiends in the projects. I want them dropping like flies. You feel me? He's indicated a willingness to testify that he was a lieutenant in Avon Barksdale's drug distribution organization, sold large quantities of drugs for his uncle. Wow. Well, what else is there? The murders. Uh-huh. Man, why you keep on that? Huh? Because you're part of it. I already told you. I don't know nothing about that witness being killed. Yeah. That's what he's All pissed about. Bodies. But then there's the kid. Wallace. Because they think they got a snitch. More I than one. Go past Argyle Street tonight. I got that shit on tape. Mm-hmm. I don't want more. His name is Brandon Wright. Oh, shit. Brandon broke fingers, gouged an eye out, all kinds of fun. Yeah. So you told Wallace to wait. Then you called Stringer and Stringer. He gathered the troops. Send a message to the Jets, they said. Wallace, he couldn't handle that. Then about a week ago, my uncle and Stringer, they called me down to the club. Stringer, he's all worried about Wallace, and I told him. I said, Wallace ain't no snitch. Fuck. That's on me. Any idea who they sent at Wallace? Oh, come on, D. Yes. Her. Deirdre. Because he's already pieced together the crime scene. She was one of my uncle's girls. Yeah, but we got people who put you with her the night she's killed. My uncle gave me an eight ball of coke. Told me to take it over there to her. I was surprised, cuz, you know, I thought he dumped her. But he said, nah, I wasn't like that no more. All naked and shit with this little-ass robe on. 
So she's your uncle's girl, but she comes to the door for you naked. Anyway, this is really like Charlie's story. You won't let me come in. She's like, nah, because she got to get ready for my uncle to come by later. So I turned around, started walking back to the truck, and I heard this shot. We bet he come running back with this big ass 45 he liked to use so much. Tells me how he was tapping on the window real soft. You know, when she gets up to the mm. window and looks out. Now then, we've heard him tell this story to everyone in the pro to those guys in the projects. Where I remember it specifically because I, I wanted to remember as many details of it that it, he was willing to part with. Now the story's changed that it's Wee Bay with his 45. So I'm not exactly 100% certain which is the correct story here. I'd like it to be the one he's just told. Because from what we've seen of him and his... Just his mannerisms and the way he presents himself, I'm not sure... You just live with this shit until you can't breathe no more. We need a trap and trace, but not in Maryland. Pennsylvania, Philly. Well, you gotta go through them. Uh, we tried that, we lose a week, then tell us it can't be done. And another week for their attorneys to okay our subpoena. If we can do it, and I'm not saying we can. It's gonna be a fucking week, maybe two. Jesus. <sighs> Thanks, Roy. No problems. No. Huh? All right, man. I'll get at you. Where's the bag? It's very Maybe subtle. Like that door, right? Tell him to get this straight. Three parts of this, right? To one of raw. All right? And that's how we're going to do it until we get the new stash. We can't pick up any new narcotics work unless it goes to priority organized crime targets. Meaning Cosa Nostra or Colombians. Yeah. Or Russians, maybe. Yeah. Well, we don't have any Colombians in Baltimore. Yeah, we don't have any wise guys. All we got is a whole lot of locals a little busy tearing the west side apart. I hear you. Okay, so you're only interested in massive quantity when it's a Mexican drug lord or Colombian drug lord or someone funding it via terrorism. But as soon as it's on your own front door and it's your own people killing each other, you don't give a shit. See? You want your stuff like that? We have something we can bring to our ASAC. What kind of corruption? Don't know. What kind you got? How about senators? About a money trial. Yo, who? That you'd be interested in. Yep, yep. Right? Yellow top, yellow top, got them yellow top. Oh, shit. Motherfucker! The fuck is up? What are you doing? This ain't an open market. You Trying know that. Trying to step in. There ain't no market at all, nigga. You ain't got shit to sell. Pack that ass up and hold that dude. Words spread so fast. That's why we can't win. Why not? Because the minute one's out, another takes over. They fuck up, they get beat. We fuck up, they give us pensions. This is the, re the, the real issue that's been around decades. And it's whether it's this or whether it's, it goes as high a profile as what they've just said. As whether it's like uh, overseas Colombian drug lords, Mexican drug lords, whatever. Um, the war on drugs is lost. It always was. It was lost before they started it because it had already made it to where it is. And as we're moving into the the early noughties of the you know two thousands, post nine eleven, that the importance has shifted. And we all know for a fact that, it, to a certain degree, this has helped fund the government, especially when you're looking international. But this is the whole problem with drugs. And I hate it when people use the word drug pusher. No one pushes drugs. No one forces you to take drugs. It's there because you want it. You buy it because you want it. And no sooner is he saying, let everyone know it's business as usual, we're back up. Immediately, the minute they think there's any sort of slight opportunity to step in 
another just takes over. It doesn't matter how many of you you take off, how many you take off the street, whether the low level, mid level, high level. The minute you do, another one moves straight into their place. It's it's never going to go away ever until they decide, which they're never going to do because of the political aspect of things. No politician is going to come out and go, do you know what? Let's legalize it. Let's people be able to buy it pharmaceutical grade over the counter. Cut out all of these guys. Stop them making this kind of profit. Cut down the amount of trafficking and murders and shootings and certain individuals making it rich out of it. But no one's ever going to do that because of its impact and what it's what it can do to an individual, a family. That's the problem. Yeah, we lost the wire, but uh, the good news is D'Angelo's flipped. And we're talking to the feds about maybe... Fuck those dogs. I knew that was coming. She's there, lying in a hospital bed, and you're still she talking chop. Since I got you up in here acting like my bitch and shit, <laughs> <laughs> with all your guilty ass crying and whatnot, <clears throat> maybe you can do something for me. But she wanted you to have that and told me to tell you she's sorry to be late with it. <laughs> Girl, that's like a hundred dollars at least. Enough for what I got going on now, man. Actually, no, it's more. You, uh, it's twenty. You give, give the rest back to her. Wow. Are you sure? I feel so sorry for this guy because he, he's trying. At the end of the day, especially when it comes to a payoff or, or the, uh, the agreement that she has with him as a CI, where they always pay them. <clears throat> Any other situation, you don't give money. You don't lend money. You don't listen to their stories because you're not listening to them. You're listening to the drug. The drug is talking. And this guy, Bubbles, has tried... Especially with what happened to his friend. This is what changed his outlook. He's actually really tried, and that happening to Kima came at the worst possible time, obviously, for her, but for him as well. And I want to I want to see this guy get clean. I really, really do. I don't know if he's going to or not, but and I like the actor. And for those of you that mentioned in the comments, I do know this is also the guy that played the taxi driver in, was it season three, I think, of Fringe, when uh, Olivia was on the other side. Hey, McNutty. Don't tell her. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I, I don't want to know. <laughs> This is the kind of woman that can really fuck your life up. The world is on its ass. <laughs> <laughs> he buys up every piece of garbage real estate he can. Yeah. Flips it three or four times, exaggerating the values. And now the city's going to pay him millions to condemn the properties for the renewal project. Nothing. He gives you the drugs and the violence. Huh. He gives you Avon Barksdale, string a bell. And they give us the senator. Politicians the primary target? Of course. Uh, well, fuck the politicians. It's Barksdale and Bell. Those guys are... This is exactly what happens. So you are willing to barter and make deals even with low-level scum like this, including Avon and Stringer and all of them, because if they can lead you to more prominent figures that's good for being in the news, in the media, and clean up dirty money from things like this because let's face it one of the biggest money making schemes out there is property development and in the way that they're doing it here where it's they're buying it at, at dirt cheap prices flipping it like you said three or four times and then you get to use it as a rehabilitation thing and condemn it and and you make all the money out of it whatever whatever scenario it is as regards property or even if it's just buying cheap and putting on stupidly ridiculous multi-million pound apartments and making a shit ton of money out of it and then just walking away the only reason the fbi are interested is that they're not looking at the drug thing that they want something more federal was so the drugs and murder don't cut it anymore huh yeah well how about terrorism 
These guys have dropped 14 to 15 bodies. The witnesses, cooperators, they're... That kind of hyperbole doesn't serve anyone, Detective. If you could link the money to terrorism, that would be different. West Baltimore is dying, and you empty suits are running around trying to pin some politician's pelt to the wall. I thought you was real police, brother. That mean you got to step up and fill his shoes. You ready for that? <sighs> Ma, you know I ain't. He messed up, Dave. No, he, he didn't mess up. Now, if you want to get even with him, you can. But you hurt him. You hurt this whole family. There we go. All of us. There's the F word. Me and Trina and family. the cousins. <clears throat> I don't know whether I should say this. But I'm going to say it anyway. And if I have second thoughts, or if it's always inappropriate, I may pull it out in editing. You may never get to hear this. This whole family thing and sticking together and, and multiple generations living together, I think is more a black thing than it is a white thing. And I'm not being racist in any way, shape or form. It's just a matter of fact. And they use this family and religion and everything to have this hold over you. If this was a white family that we're talking about here, she would not have the kind of sway that she's currently trying to push onto him here because they'll be like, I don't own you nothing. I don't care if you're family or not. I'll walk away. That's all I want to say. <laughs> that may end, that may make it into the final cut. It may not. How the fuck are you going to start over without your peoples? Quite easy. Without your own child, even. Anyone can start again, move away. What's up, LT? Anything you want to tell me? Been weeks now. The deputy ops knows what's going on in this unit almost before I do. Except last week, we run the buck up in the Boxdale's club office. And Burrell, for once, he's a step behind. Maybe he... Uh... I see it. I look around the office, and I see that one of my people is at the academy for him service. And there's the deputy fucking ops telling me how concerned he is about the case. He needs to be informed. A couple of weeks from now, you're going to be in some district somewhere with 11 or 12 uniforms looking to you for everything. Now, some of them are going to be good police. Some of them are going to be young and stupid. A few are going to be pieces of shit. But all of them will take their cue from you because you're impressionable comes a day you're gonna have to decide whether it's about you or about the work Clearances I'm looking at here. I mean, Christ, for the first time this year, we got the clearance rate up over 40%. That's on the one hand. And of course, it's the first a deputy hears his troops are creeping behind his back trying to take a case federal when they've already been told the case is closed. Did you actually call the first deputy an empty suit? <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, where don't you want to go? Ask the, ask the well, question well, every time, isn't it? Why don't you want to go? Because that's where you're going. Maybe he pleads to one count of attempted possession. It takes, I don't know, maybe three, four. Maybe Get he can out. arrange for everyone you have on those tapes to follow suit. Representing Mr. Bryce, I'm fairly confident that to avoid the death penalty, he'll proffer to at least a half dozen of your open murders. Still, you walk away with at least a half dozen clearances. Assets. You take the strip club, you take whatever trucks and cars you can link to the drug trafficking, and, of course, whatever cash you've seized. But there's nothing else in his name to take. So you keep most of the money, most of the real estate, huh. and Stringer Bell stays on the street with his hand on the throttle. Huh. In accepting this plea, Mr. Barksdale acknowledges his role in procuring those drugs with the intent to dilute, package, and sell retail amounts of heroin. He's off again. Crescent. I do better, I give him more. Life no parole means what it says. This proffer keeps you off death row, but that's all it does. Nah. But as to murders, you might as well give them what you have. Because anything you leave out is outside the deal. They learn about it later, they can charge you later. 
You don't even give a right. shit. I did, little man. Thinking he might get weak on that cop getting shot. Yeah? Where's the body? Drew it hell behind the reptile house. How about them witnesses? The security lady. Yeah. And what's his name? The maintenance man. Gant? Yeah. Both of them. You did Gant alone. <laughs> In exchange for his pleading guilty to one count of conspiracy, he agrees to a sentence not to exceed 15 years in DOC. See, this ain't no DEU. It ain't like that. When you all came downtown, the job changed. Down here, we make big cases, like this Barksdale thing, right? And all that mess you call police work down in the districts, all that fuck somebody up and rip and run bullshit, it won't play down here. You think I'm kidding? This is what makes cases, gentlemen. You do not play the game for yourself, you play it for us. If you remember these few rules, you'll find me to be supportive and reasonable. Very reasonable, sir. <laughs> Shots off. That's what they say about me. I'm saying, you take their money, then you send them around, let some other niggas serve. The way you doing it, someone snapping pictures got the whole deal. Same problem. We gotta tighten up around here, yo. As Mr. Barksdale has two prior convictions and is insisting that the effort to purchase and transport the kilo was undertaken on his own behest, and is refusing to cooperate against others in the conspiracy. The state is offering only the maximum allowable 20 years, Your Honor. You bet, man. Let it go. For life, no parole. He puts himself in for Orlando in the attempt murder on Graves. Little man. Yeah, body found up behind the reptile house in Druid Hill. I know, it's bullshit. Well, how do you tell him? <sighs> yeah. Boom. What, he said a contact wound? Yeah, doesn't play. He's taken life, no parole for shooting a cop. What the fuck? Might as well try to spring bird for killing Gant. All right. Man's taking it all, going down for it. Jesus, what the fuck did I do? How come the devil smiles? She's got a big decision to make. Heaven's wall no, it's you had to hear how come it's everyone is it? to all walks. Oh my are you the man with them jumbo sixes? I mean you fucking one. Take about the FO honey. <laughs> all in the game, yo. This fucking home was nuts. <laughs> so that was a good finale. I enjoyed that. Okay, guys, end of season one of The Wire. That didn't go exactly as I thought it would do. Um, but D'Angelo refusing to cooperate. I mean, 20 years. 20 years. And I refer all back to that with his mom. I mean, yes, he became a snitch. I was going to, you know, going to be a snitch and it's a choice, but I know they always say, you know, if, if you get in this life, you're a grown ass man. If you get into this life and whether you've chose it or you've been pushed towards it, which I think is, that's what's happened with his mum, you shouldn't be a snitch. Different if you're somebody on the outside, like our witnesses. But that's not much different than what the lawyer was saying to Avon really about letting all these other guys uh, letting all these other guys go that, that's a form of snitching as well so um now then Avon what what was he got what did he get seven years so he's probably gonna get out in probably I don't know three and a half four um meanwhile Stringer is left in judge to the funeral home and I like how it shows at the end just same same goes the cycle repeats doesn't matter who's at the top nothing really changes and McNulty <laughs> looks like I mean it looks like he's out of homicide it looks like he's, he's um, I don't know it looks like he's been tasked to like a, a marine unit um, but he knew he knew by trying to 
go behind the back and go to the feds with this. He knew, uh, what's it, um, Lester said that question he was going to ask, why don't you want to go? That's why he smiled. He knew it was coming. So I don't know what's going to happen to him, uh, where we're going to pick that up on season two of him. I have no clue. But you knew that was coming. The problem was with the feds is some drug dealer goes to jail. Nobody cares. It, it might be make a, uh, a, a small insert into a paper or be mentioned on the news once for that day and then it's old news but if you follow the money and it's a senator that's why the ones go that way that's completely different because you know uh, uh, someone who's in who's dealing drugs has made that decision and that's the life that they've chose a senator is somebody who's elected by the people so you know, people have put them in that in that position of power, and yes, dirty money. But the the problem is, like I said in commentary, that's what makes it into the media. That's what gets attention. If you bring a senator down, which is why the FBI went to head that way, they don't give a shit about some some drug dealers. That that's not what they're for. That's not what the federal bureau is about. Um, so that's why that senator up backfiring on McNulty and why he's wherever the hell he's off to now. Um, so we leave Stringer in charge. D'Angelo is going to do twenty years. We Bay, <laughs> that guy is crazy. Bubbles, I don't know. Back to his old tricks, back to his old game. And Omar. Free for all. Right now, for him. And I think uh, Kima, as I mentioned as well, I think, you know, she was looking out the window there. You could see, you know, she was trying to make some sort of life decision here. I think if she chooses to stay, it's going to be a life choice for her. I think her partner's going to walk away. But as you hear in many of these series, and from cops, once a cop, always a cop. I don't see her leaving. Um, I was hoping they didn't kill her off, which they haven't. McNulty felt particularly responsible for that, even though it was just, she happens, it, it just happened. Like she said, had she taken that gun up better, probably wouldn't have been the result that they had. Um, but yeah. I'm expecting her to still be in it in season two. So the other ones have got promoted. Um, and I like that we saw him just smile there when he's passing on that information to the younger recruits. That's That was good. Um, I have no idea what to expect for season two at all now because the game's the same. As I almost just said, it's all in the game. The game is the same, just the players have moved around a bit. So we will see. Right, I will be back with season two, episode one. If you do want to watch the full length, full length episodes of all of season one, don't forget they are available over on Patreon. You can just check the links in the description as always. If you enjoyed the video, guys, by all means, please give it a thumbs up. Post all your comments down below. It took a while for me to get into this show, but I'm, I'm totally on board now. I'm, I'm, I'm invested and I'm, I'm ready, waiting for season two. So if you don't want to miss that, the easiest way is to make sure that you give your video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe down here, and I will see you for episode one of season two next. Till then, guys, thanks a lot for watching. See you for the next one. Duh.